Hey everyone, I'm Kadesha and I have a new GitHub feature for you to check out. We've been making a lot of improvements to GitHub projects and today we have Senior Product Manager Riley here to tell us all about GitHub project views. Riley, over to you. Thanks, Kadesha. So I'm here today. I want to show a little bit about how you can set up your different project views. Projects is built to be very fast and flexible and adaptable depending on who is viewing your data and who's viewing your items. So I want to show a little bit about different ways that you can customize. So right now I'm on my squad backlog view. So I'm working with multiple teams. These are all the items that we have set up on our project. But to filter this down a little bit more, I just want to see things that are assigned on our current iteration. So now that is filtered so that I can just see the items that the team is working on during the specific cycle. And one thing that I want to do and that I'm trying to understand is, you know, I want to make sure that the teams are focused and that they have a prioritized set and list of items that they're working on so that if they've overcommitted or that we know we won't get certain things done, that we can push them off. So one way that I can do that is I can set column limits. So going to this board menu here, I can navigate down to set the column limit. And let's say that across my teams, you know, 10 items seems um, like a realistic goal that we can set. So I am going to set that column limit. And then what I can see here now is that I'm a little bit over the limit for what I wanted to do for this planning this week. So now I know that if I want to move things back so that we can address that the next cycle, that we can do that as well. And then the same thing for building. We know that, you know, 10 items is about the right range that we can accomplish in a single sprint. So now I can see right here that I only have six out of 10. So that, that seems like a realistic workload. But then one thing that I want to also understand here that I can't quite right now is that you can see that we have these estimate fields. So our team uses a um, estimate custom field to try and gauge about how much work a specific item will take. So something I can do now is I can enable a field sum on our projects. So if I navigate down to the view menu, I can go to this field sum count and I want to see the total estimates across all of the items in a column. So what I can see now is the total estimate for each of the columns here. So you can see that there's about 28 within the planning, there's 18 within the building. That seems all right for now, but if we need to make any adjustments, we can do that in the future. And one way that we can do that, if you know 28 seems a little bit high, then I can move multiple items over to a different column. Or another way that I can accomplish that is I can go to the specific item menu and I can also move them to columns that way if I don't want to drag them. And this is a good view so far. I'm able to see what the total estimate is and you know getting a sense for the general workload. But what I really want to see is this broken down by team. So I can see here, you know, I have different squads that I'm working with. So squad one, two, three, and four, but it's still not a great view for me to see exactly how the items are allocated among my teams. So one way that I can do that is I can slice by my teams. So I go to the view dropdown menu. I go down to the slice by navigation and I select team here. So what this does with the slice by feature is it pulls all of the field values into this panel on the left so that as I click through and I toggle through the items, I can see items that are just specific to that team. So it works as a quick filtering mechanism so that you can quickly toggle through the list to see how items are broken up. And I can always resize this if there's a little bit too much room. There's a lot of different fields you can slice by. You can do it by assignees, labels, repository milestones, custom fields within your project, such as an iteration or a single select or a text field. But for now, this team view allows me to see how work is broken up along my different squads. So what I can see now, it's still, you know, it's getting to a better view where I can see work broken up among my teams, but I wanna make sure that we are addressing and working through the highest priority items first. So what I want to do here is I want to sort my items by priority so that I can see my most urgent and pressing items on top to make sure that the teams are addressing the most important work at hand. So what I can do now is I can go down to sort by and I can select the priority field. So what that does is it sorts the items by my different priority values. So I have um, priorities set to urgent, high, medium, and low so that I can see the most pressing items on top and I can see them in those field pills. 
but it's still not a perfect way to see my most pressing items. Um, it's a little bit hard to gauge and go to get a quick glance as to how those are broken up. So what I want to do is I want to add a priority swim lane. So how I add a swim lane on my board is I go down to group by and I can actually add a swim lane by my super priority field. So what that does is it's the same group by as you have seen already on tables and roadmaps, but it is now available on boards. So I can go through and I can see that there are a couple items that are urgent that we have not yet started. So I'm going to try and flag these to the team to make sure that we can get them over into planning. And then I can go down the list. It seems like everything else is in a pretty good state. I can even minimize these and switch in between. And that allows me to get a better gauge of about how my work is broken up by priority. I can also add a swim lane by any of the other fields here, but priority allows me to see my most urgent items. So I'm going to keep that there for now. And one of the great things about projects is that the layouts are very flexible and adaptable, and it's just a different way to view the same data and view the same items. So for example, I know that one of my team members really prefers to work in tables. They like the spreadsheet view. They like a lot of those functionality pieces. So what I can do is I can just switch to a table layout. So what that does, it keeps my same um, priority grouping here so I can still see the items. I'm still sliced by my team values, still have the same filtering that carries over, but then it just allows me to view um, you know, the items a different way and in a different layout. And there's not only tables and boards, we also have a roadmap layout. So if I'm trying to gauge how this looks all together and more of a visual component of how it all lines up, then I can also switch to a roadmap here. So now I can see how these items break down by iteration, the quarter zoom, it allows me to see it at a little bit higher level. If I want to zoom in to see other items in the future, in the past, or even zooming out to a year, I can do that as well. So again, it just makes it easier to visualize the items in different ways. And that is a little bit about how you can set up your project views. So I saw you did at current when filtering. Is there a list of filter keywords that we can look at? Yes, there is documentation about the different filter keywords and qualifiers that you can use, but something that is helpful that for specific fields, you know, if I want to just see my items that are assigned to me, then we have some helpful drop downs that allow you to build your filter queries with some suggestions. And looking again at the sprint field that I've defined, something that's very helpful is this current, next, and previous keywords that can help you see what is in your current sprint, what is next, what's previous. And there's some flexibility in the logic there if you want to get a little bit more creative with it, if you want to look at um, items in you know, a further iteration as well. So those are all available in the documentation. So Riley, are we able to filter by any field and also custom fields? Yes, yep. So you can either enter a, you know, if you're just looking for a free text field, if I wanna see if there is anything for documentation here, then I can see that it pulled it from here, but you can filter by any of the fields in your project. So if you're looking at assignees, again, it will pop up some suggestions. If you're looking at labels, um, it will give suggestions as well, but then yeah, anything for a custom field, it will um, populate some suggestions. So you have something to work off of. Are there plans to come up with different views in the future? Yeah, there's no other planned layouts as of now, but again, we're just trying to make it very flexible and easy for you to switch in between your layouts and improving what you can do and how you can view your project items. So for example, the slice by was just released. So that just gives an easy way to use kind of the filtering mechanisms and you can play around with it with your different layouts. Cool. Thanks so much, Riley, for showing us all about GitHub Project Views. If you have questions about this feature, be sure to check out our GitHub discussion board or leave your questions below in the comments. Like this video and subscribe to our channel and stay tuned for another checkout video coming your way very soon.